And we've got two different types of diabetes. So either way, diabetes is going to be an issue with insulin. All right, and we'll take a quick second because many of us might not totally understand what insulin does, but insulin is an extremely powerful hormone in the body. And it is what we call an anabolic hormone, which means it contributes to storage. And not just anabolic, like muscle building muscle, right? You might have heard anabolic steroids, but uh, in storing and building of tissue and things. So it is an anabolic hormone. So you can think, okay, cool, well, when would insulin be high? Well, when I've eaten food, I've taken food into my body, my body wants to go into storage mode. What am I going to do with that? Maybe that's replenishing carbohydrate and glycogen stores. Maybe that is helping with repair and recovery. Maybe that is excess calories that I'm going to store as fat. Lots of things that can happen. But when insulin levels are increased after we eat, it allows the cells to actually bring in that glucose into the cell and do whatever it's going to need to do with it. So that's the impact of insulin. Now, someone who is a type 1 diabetic, a type 1 diabetic is someone who does just naturally not produce enough insulin. So it's not that their cells don't respond to it, but they're not producing enough. As you guys can see, our natural process here is we have that insulin you know, uh, secreted from the pancreas and then go about you know, throughout the bloodstream and have its impact on bringing glucose into the muscles and into the cells. But if we're not producing enough of that, then what happens is we just have this glucose that's floating around the system and we have a lot of issues with regulating blood glucose levels. It makes it harder for our body to have normal functioning process. So what happens, that person's probably going to have a pump. And it's really important to be aware of and do some additional research on because that's also going to be something that if that person has not been active a lot recently, they may have some issues with figuring out their blood sugar levels when they work out, right? So they need to slowly take their time You'll see as we get into our special populations later on in the materials that we'll address that specifically, but it's going to be more about taking things slow, having snacks on hand, and really progressing them in a slow fashion to make sure we're not overdoing it early on. Um, but the great thing is, is that exercise is an important part of managing and dealing with diabetes. It'll help regulate blood sugar levels. The difference between type 1 and type 2, type 2, which is also oftentimes called adult onset diabetes uh, because it is oftentimes developed. That is where we produce plenty of insulin, but our cells just stop responding to it. So they become non-responsive or less responsive to insulin. So the same impact happens, which means we end up having blood glucose floating around in our bloodstream that is not getting taken into the cells. Um, but that one especially, you know, hey, again, could it be prevented? For many people, it could. Can it be reversed? For some, it can, yes, because what we'll find is that a single bout, meaning a single workout out in the gym, a single bout of exercise, is going to have a positive impact on your insulin sensitivity. So that means just from one workout, every time you do it, the insulin sensitivity increases and your body becomes better for a short period of time at bringing in that glucose from the, uh, from the bloodstream. And then over time, obviously, if we can have a long-term impact on the health and the weight, then maybe we can reverse some of the impacts and side effects out. But definitely another one to be very familiar with, not only from test-taking standpoints, what the difference between type 1 and type 2 is, but also because it's one that, you know, as you have clients who have these 